Do you remember the first time you learned how to drive? Do you remember what you felt like? You suddenly had the possibility of doing all sorts of things that you'd never done before. You had the power to move, the power to explore, the power to be flexible. How did that make you feel? Excited? Liberated? Full of possibility and opportunity? How do you think these people feel right now? <laughs> Not much opportunity there. So weather, construction, congestion, they're all contributing to longer and more frustrating commutes. And for many of us, this is the reality every day. So what do you do? How do you escape? Well, we have one solution we're working on, and we call it the TFX. It's faster than a car. It's safer than a car. It feels like a car when you're driving it. It's more convenient than a plane, and it's simpler to operate than a plane. It has room for four adults. It has vertical takeoff and vertical landing, no runway needed. And when you climb into this, you'll be able to program in your destination, sit back and read a magazine. It will take off by itself, fly by itself, and with your approval, it will land by itself. Now you might be thinking, that sounds pretty cool, but I, I don't have time to go get a private pilot's license. I just don't have time for that. Don't worry about it. You're not gonna need a pilot's license to operate this vehicle. We think you will be able to learn how to operate it in one weekend. Let's look at a short video to see how this might look in action. So when we look ahead at the required design and technology integration steps to get this finished, we think we'll be able to be producing this within 10 years. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, haven't I heard this story before? Yes, you have. People have been designing flying cars for 100 years. The very first patent was issued in 1918. So what's different now? Why now? Well, there are three factors that are coming together in an unprecedented way. Technology, regulation, and consumer acclimation to autonomous systems. So let's talk about technology first. Look at all these vehicles on the screen. What's the one thing they all have in common? They're all cars that have had various things added to them to make them be able to fly. Early on, Terra Fugia decided that's a high risk path. The business plan says we're gonna approach this technological challenge incrementally we're going to design first a plane that can drive because that's easier and more predictable. We're gonna learn our lessons from that and then go ahead and build a car that can fly. Now, so the car that can fly, sorry, this, the plane that can drive is called the transition. And the prototypes for this vehicle have surpassed 100 hours in flight testing and successfully navigated over 200 takeoffs and landings. It fits in a single car garage, as you can see. So when you want to go somewhere, you take it out of your garage, you drive to the nearest airport. On the way, you fill up the gas tank at your local gas station with regular old 91 octane gas. When you arrive at the airport, you drive right onto the tarmac. And once you're on the tarmac, you push a button and the wings unfold. And in 10 minutes or less, you can be airborne. No hassle of storing your plane in a hangar at the airport. 
no hassle of using aviation gas, no hassle of transferring your bags from your car to your plane, no hassle of warming up the engine of the airplane at the airport. You're on your way. Now, the transition can be used at any regional or community airport in the United States. How many of those do you think there are? I'll give you a hint. It's a lot more than the red dot show. 5,200. There are 5,200 regional and community airports in the United States. Time Magazine estimates that 98% of the United States population lives within a 30 minute drive of one of these airports. This is a massive infrastructure resource that is almost totally unutilized. Now part of the reason it's a bit unutilized is that most of those airports don't have control towers or rental car counters. This looks like a pretty nice place to go to. I'd like to be there right now. But nice airstrip, nice place to see. But look at the terminal in the lower right corner of the screen. <laughs> Not looking good for rental cars, is it? No. Now, there's a city near there. It looks like a town. So you might be able to call a taxi when you fly into this airport. But you can't use your cell phone when you're flying a small airplane. So you have to land, then break out your cell phone, call for the taxi, and who knows how long you're going to be waiting at that point. Now, some airports, there's no taxi to call. <laughs> you're on your own. In the transition, you push the button, the, wing, the, wing, sorry, the wings fold up, and you're on your way, driving to wherever you need to go. So like other small aircraft, if you're going to a smaller city, the transition allows you to avoid the incredibly inefficient hub and spoke system of the big airlines. But unlike any other small aircraft, it also allows you to go those last few miles directly to your ultimate destination. Now, one customer of ours who's put down a deposit has told us that this is exactly what he needs for shorter business trips. Exactly. And we have almost a hundred other people who are so interested in this and passionate about it that they've written checks, sizable checks I'll add, to reserve a spot in line to get their transition. Now, a couple words about safety. If you're flying and you encounter visibility conditions like fog or clouds or weather that you're not trained for, You've got to land. Like I said, there are 5,200 options to choose from, so you can probably do it fairly quickly, but you've got to land. In a traditional craft, you're grounded until that passes. In the transition, and you, I'm sorry, and you might actually have to cancel your trip that you've put a lot of investment into. With the transition, you push the button, the wings fold up, and you keep driving towards your destination. You keep making progress towards your destination. That is a powerful psychological advantage. And we are confident that that will address a significant cause of fatalities in small aircraft, which is when you encounter visibility conditions you're not trained for, too many pilots push it and they crash. Now, another point about safety. Let's say something really unpleasant is going on and you're not gonna make it to one of those 5,200 airports. Okay, look in the cockpit, find the bright red handle, give it a good hard pull and a whole plane parachute pops out. Now this is not some sort of future technology. These are in use in several small aircraft that are already out in the marketplace. Now when you land this way, it's not good for the plane. <laughs> it's not the ideal way to land. But you will be able to walk away. These have saved over 300 lives so far. So the transition works. It flies. It flies pretty nicely as a matter of fact. We're not even doing flight testing on this for prototype anymore. We've moved on to drivetrain durability testing. And the nice thing is it allows me to take it around in the parking lot a little more often. <laughs> it's fun to drive and I love taking it out. So let's watch a short video that gives you a sense of the experience of driving and flying the transition.
so we've designed in all the safety features we think we need for a safe road operation. Crashworthiness, airbags, etc. And we're now building the third generation prototype of this design. Once that's finished, we will put it through a litany of demonstration tests that we need to demonstrate to us and to our regulators that the product meets the regulations that apply to it. And once we do that, then we'll move into production. And we expect to be handing over the first set of keys within two years. And again, an advantage of this, we've gone through this, we've learned our lessons, we're now in a much better position to be able to continue the development of the car that flies that I showed you earlier. Now, while we were developing this technology, we were also devoting a lot of resources to working with regulators. So the second reason that now is the time for flying cars is the state of regulation. So regulation is important, and we have been working with regulators to try to make an environment for flying cars that is not only acceptable for them, but will actively encourage them. Regulation can sometimes dictate the pace at which new technology is rolled out. In the late 1800s, when automobiles first came on the scene, some US states in the 1890s passed laws that stated, if you want to drive your car, you have to have someone else walking 60 yards ahead of you, waving a red flag <laughs> or swinging a lantern so that you can warn bystanders, livestock, and horses of your impending arrival. Can you imagine having a mini parade every time you want to go to the store to buy a gallon of milk? <laughs> now, and around the same time, farmers weren't keen on the automobiles either. And a bunch of groups arose called Farmers Anti-Automobile Societies. They were proposing a litany of regulations around the automobile. One of those was, again, if you're driving your car and you encounter a horse coming the other way, coming at you, if the horse is sufficiently agitated that it refuses to pass, you need to turn off the engine, get out of the car, disassemble the vehicle, <laughs> hide it in the grass or the bushes so that the horse can't see it, the horse calms down and passes. And presumably at that point you're invited to reassemble your vehicle and just move on your way. No problem. Thankfully that's not a law. So, um, so like I said, regulations matter. So Terrafugia for years has had a seat at the table of helping to enhance and improve the regulations and the standards that cover small craft like the transition. And we are confident that the energy and the time that we've put into developing those collaborative relationships with those standards bodies, plus the progress that has been made on those standards, will make for an environment that is much more receptive to a craft like the TFX. Now, the third thing, third factor, in why now is the time for flying cars is customer acclimation to autonomous systems. So almost two years ago, Northrop Grumman sent this fighter-like, fighter jet-like craft up in the air and told it to land on an aircraft carrier. And it did, no pilot, no remote control, all by itself. A host of companies are developing self-driving autonomous cars or related technologies. There's been an incredible amount of progress on these in the last few years. Do you remember a few years ago when a feature came out on luxury cars whereby you could push a button and it would parallel park for you automatically while you kept your hands off the wheel? It seemed futuristic and, and almost weird at the time. A few years later, now, that feature is making its way into mid-level cars. No longer seems exotic. So there's a lot of uh, interesting technological developments happening in the car world. Now, by the way, it is much easier to, for a computer to fly a plane in the air than it is to drive a car on the road. The number and the type of obstacles on the road are just vastly, vastly greater. In general, this doesn't happen at 5,000 feet. <laughs> Finally, drones. We all know a lot about drones. We know that individuals and small companies, or sorry, individuals and companies have been developing small drones that can do all sorts of different things. Aerial photography, surveying farmers' fields, and if the regulators ultimately allow it, delivering packages to your doorstep. Now, all of these developments are really important technologically, but they're also important societally, because the more people get used to things that are self-driving on the road, in the air, the more receptive they're going to be to a vehicle like the TFX that combines autonomy and carrying people around. 
So, can you imagine your commute shortening from hours to minutes? Can you imagine occasionally wanting to get from your house to some other place much faster than current traffic conditions allow and you need door-to-door -door service? Wouldn't it be fun to use your phone to summon a flying taxi instead of a regular taxi? Or for your next vacation, instead of exploring a new area, you could also explore a whole new way to make the journey to get to that area. So the coalescence of technology, regulation, and customer acceptance is starting to happen now. And I am really, really excited about it. We have an incredible team that is working to give you the power, sooner than you might think, to transform your commute, to transform your vacations, to transform the way you feel about getting from point A to point B, to recapture that feeling of freedom and flexibility, to make you feel like you just learned how to drive all over again. Thank you.